All right, so I found the top 10 highest paying remote jobs. These are going to be jobs that you can regularly do remotely, right? Not, you know, once in a while, but regularly there's a lot of open positions for remote jobs and they're going to be very high paying. And I'm gonna start with number 10 and go all the way down to number one, which is the highest paying remote job. So some of these are gonna require a lot of experience and some of them you can get into at the entry level. So if you enjoy me making videos like this, go ahead and let me know by gently tapping that like button. And let's get into it with number 10 on the list, which is going to be human resource specialist, right? So HR, human resources, I think everybody knows about this. This is a role that can often be done remotely. And some of the things that you are gonna be doing remotely are of course, recruitment, employee relations, benefits administration, and compliance. Give me the Tesseract or I'll gut you like a fish. Okay. Now this position does typically require a bachelor's degree, but the great thing about this is it doesn't require a specific degree. A lot of the time people will move into HR with oh, psychology okay, degrees, yeah. for instance. <laughs> and HR specialists make about $62,000 a year. And from this position, you can move into even higher paying roles like HR manager. So some of the skills you're gonna need for this are going to be strong interpersonal and communication skills, knowledge of employment laws and regulations, organizational skills, attention to detail, and the ability to maintain confidentiality. Now, to get started for this, like I said, you will need a bachelor's degree, but it doesn't have to be a specific one. A lot of the time people will go into this with psychology degrees or business administration degrees, etc. It also helps by getting relevant certifications such as PHR or SHRMCP. And then of course you would find companies that are hiring or even inquire within the company that you're already working for and start applying for those jobs. Some of the pros of this one are going to be high earning potential and competitive salary, opportunity to impact organizational success and employee well-being, and it's a constantly evolving field with potential for career growth. Some of the cons of this one are going to be that it requires strong organizational and problem-solving skills. You have to balance the needs of the employee and the organization, which can be challenging. And remote work can sometimes feel isolating without proper communication and collaboration strategies. But overall, I'm going to give this one an 8 out of 10 opportunity score. It's really solid, and it's especially good if you've got a degree where maybe you're not so happy with the job prospects, and you want to try to move into a role like this. Now, the next on the list, is going to be one of my favorites, and that's going to be tech support. Now, there's a lot of different tech support jobs you can go into. There's probably like 10 or 15 different titles. One of them, of course, is IT help desk, which is, in my opinion, the easiest one to get into. But basically, you're going to become the ultimate troubleshooter and conquer technical conundrums from the comfort of your home. Hello, IT. Have you tried turning it off and on again? And in tech support, you're going to be providing assistance and guidance to both customers as well as other people within your business on technical issues. And you're going to be troubleshooting problems, providing solutions, and offering excellent customer service. Hello, IT. Have you tried turning it off? You know what? I'm sick of saying that. And companies are pretty much always hiring for this. For instance, Great Virtual Works is often hiring for this position. Now, this is an entry-level job, and you do not have to get a college degree in order to to get into these IT jobs. Most people recommend getting certificates and certifications instead, but you can even get into these jobs without getting certs. And in this position, you'd make about $52,000 a year, which is excellent for an entry level job, especially considering there's tons of other positions you can move into where you can easily make it to the six figure level. So some of the skills that you would want to have for this one are excellent technical knowledge, troubleshooting abilities, the patience to handle customer inquiries, strong communication skills, and the ability to adapt to various software software and systems. Some of the pros of this one are it's a high paying remote job. You have the opportunity to help others and solve technical challenges. And there is flexibility in work hours and location. Some of the cons of this one are you may have to deal with frustrated customers. You are required to stay updated with rapidly evolving technologies. And there can be potential for high stress situations in case a system breaks down, for instance. But overall, I absolutely love this one. I'm going to give it an opportunity score of 9.5 out of 10. The next one on the list is going to be another one of my favorites which is digital marketing. Now, there is a ton of different careers you can go into. Digital marketing is almost like an umbrella term. You can go into pay-per-click, you can become an SEO specialist, you can create content, you can become a copywriter, you can manage a newsletter, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You got so many options, man. But basically, you're gonna be developing and implementing online marketing strategies to promote products or services. And you're gonna be harnessing the power of digital platforms to drive leads and sales. Ichiban, lipstick for men. And 
all of marketing is moving towards the digital realm. And one of the main reasons for that is because it's so easy to actually measure your ROI. So imagine if you do like a billboard ad or a TV ad, you can't really track how many sales or leads that is driven. So you're spending all this money on these billboards. And I know that people literally spend like $5,000 a month, sometimes $10,000 a month on these billboards, and they have no idea what kind of ROI they're getting from it. Whereas with digital marketing, you know exactly how much money that you're getting back from it. So digital marketers in general make about $65,000 a year. And keep in mind, this is a job you can get at the entry level and you do not need a college degree or previous experience. Like the sound of that. So that is very, very high paying for an entry level job. Some of the skills you would need to be successful in these types of positions are typically going to be strong communication skills, analytical skills, creativity, and a deep understanding of whatever digital marketing channel you choose, such as SEO, social media, paid advertising, etc. Some of the pros of this one are going to be it's a constantly evolving field with diverse challenges. It has direct impact on business growth, and it's a dynamic role where you combine creativity, strategic thinking, and technical skills. Some of the cons of this one are it can be a fast paced and competitive industry. The results are typically going to be performance driven, and there is a huge need for ongoing learning and self-improvement. But overall, I'm going to give this one an opportunity score of 9.5 out of 10. And one thing I've talked about many times on this channel is how this is one of my favorite entry level careers to get into. I've interviewed a bunch of people who have gotten into digital marketing on this channel. And my friend Seth actually has a free masterclass where he basically goes over all the different types of digital marketing careers. And he tries to help you choose the best one for you. And I'll put that down in the description as well as the pinned comment below. And you can check it out if you'd like. The next one on the list is going to be a computer systems analyst. And this one is all about assessing an organization's computer system needs and making it as efficient as possible to accomplish the business's goals, but at the same time, making it safe and secure. What's going on? There's so much porn. And computer systems analysts make about $84,000 a year. Now, if you look up the statistics, most computer system analysts do have a degree, but it is possible to get into this without a degree. And you would do that by getting certifications, self-learning, or going to a boot camp. And it's not an entry level job. Typically, you would move into this from an IT role, for instance, but it's also not really a senior level position and it is relatively easy to get into. So some of the pros of this one are there is a good variety of tasks that you can work on and you do get the opportunity to have constant learning opportunities. Some of the cons of this one are kind of the same thing. You have to stay updated on emerging and changing technologies. You also have to be able to communicate technical concepts to non-technical people. And there can be some pressure when it comes to meeting deadlines and managing multiple projects. But overall, this is a pretty good one. I'll give it an 8.5 out of 10 opportunity score. The next one on the list is one you've probably heard about a million times, but I definitely had to include it. This is a very good career, and that's going to be software developer. And basically, you're going to be creating, designing, and maintaining computer programs and applications. And basically, you're going to get paid to turn caffeine into code, juggle endless lines of text like a digital acrobat, and solve puzzles that make your brain do the Macarena. Now there is a ton of remote job opportunities for software developers. While I've been traveling, a lot of the people that I meet abroad are people who are software developers. So not only is there remote job opportunities, but there's also fully remote job opportunities as well, meaning you can literally go anywhere in the world as long as you have an internet connection. And software developers make about $95,000 a year. Now, unbelievably, this is technically an entry level job. But with that being said, it has gotten harder and harder to <laughs> land that first job. So 10 years ago, it was incredibly easy to land a job as a software developer. You didn't need a degree. You didn't need any previous experience, but it has gotten much harder since then. Never easy, is it? But with that being said, it's still not impossible. You can go the traditional education route and get a computer science degree. That's perfectly viable and perfectly fine. You can also go the self-teaching route or the certification route or go to a boot camp. That's something you definitely want to look into. And the best opportunity is going to vary depending on the person and their situation. But some of these skills and characteristics needed for this position are going to be strong programming skills, of course, proficiency in programming languages like Java, Python, or JavaScript, logical thinking, problem solving abilities, attention to detail, and a continuous learning mindset. Some of the pros of this one are going to be high demand and job stability, opportunities for creativity and innovation, and you're always going to be learning and developing new skills. Some of the cons of this one are it may require long hours and intense problem solving for bugs. You have a continuous need to stay updated with 
with evolving technologies, and there is potential for isolation. So a lot of software developers report being very lonely, for instance. But overall, this one is incredible. I'm gonna give it an opportunity score of 9.5 out of 10. The next one on the list, number five, is another one that I absolutely love and I've talked about many times on the channel, and that is going to be technology sales. And there's a lot of different roles within this, but basically you're gonna be working in a B2B industry, meaning you're working for a business, but you're selling your products or services to another business. And this tends to be much more of a logical type of selling, and it tends to be much more about relationship building and understanding what other businesses need rather than kind of appealing to emotion and trying to make people make split second decisions to pay you a bunch of money. Kind of like a sketchy used car salesman, for instance. I just bought one of my own cars. And like I said, there's a lot of different tech sales roles, but technology sales specialists make about $103,000 a year. And this is one of the only careers I can think of where you can actually make $100,000 a year in your very first year working. Oh, wow. And the best thing is you do not need a degree or previous experience to get into it. Now, some of the required skills here are going to be, of course, very good communication skills, negotiation, interpersonal skills, and of course, a good understanding of whatever technology you're using and its applications. Some of the pros of this one are very high earning potential, the excitement of selling innovative technology, and the opportunity to work remotely. Some of the cons of this one are going to be intense competition in the tech sales market, occasional travel requirements, and the need to stay up to date on rapidly evolving technologies. But overall, this one is incredible. I'm gonna give it an opportunity score of a 9.5 out of 10. The next one on the list is going to be a product manager. Now this is definitely not an entry level role. I'd say this is almost like a mid or even high tier role. Oh man. But with that being said, I really like this career because it's almost like being an entrepreneur with training wheels. And basically you're gonna be working for a big company like Amazon, for instance, and they're gonna be launching a new product and you're basically in charge of that product. So you're basically going to be like a conductor of an orchestra, harmonizing the efforts between the engineers, the designers, the marketers, and the sales department. And product managers make about $127,000 a year. Now, some of the skills you would need for this position are going to be strong communication and problem solving skills, leadership skills, and a blend of business acumen, technical understanding, and customer empathy. So basically, you would need to have like 80% of the skills you would need to become a successful entrepreneur. And to get started with this, you typically would need to have a college degree. There are exceptions, but most, you know, product managers do have a college degree. Things are changing though. And you'd also have to have work experience in something else such as data analytics or project management. And then you could go ahead and take courses and certifications and self-learn online and start applying for roles. But overall, the pros of this one are you have the opportunity to shape and influence the direction of an innovative product. You have a broad range of different industries and companies that you can work at, and there are continuous learning and growth opportunities. And what that means is if you can learn the skills that it takes to become a successful product manager, it's basically going to be like training wheels for starting your own business later on down the line. Some of the cons here are it does require a balance of strategic thinking and tactical execution. It also involves working with cross-functional teams and kind of making them all work together, which can be very difficult. And it can involve high pressure situations and challenging decision-making processes. So overall, I'm gonna give this one an eight out of 10 opportunity score. I think it's a great career to go into. The next one on the list is going to be a data scientist. And for this one, typically you're going to need at least a bachelor's degree. And in many cases, data scientists actually have a master's degree in something like statistics. And basically as a data scientist, you are combining the skill of programming, kind of like software developer with the skill of statistics. And if anything, you're gonna be more skilled at the statistics side of things. And I like this quote of, in God we trust, all others must bring data. And the term of data scientist was actually coined in 2008. So this is a relatively new career. And data scientists make about $127,000 a year. So some of the skills you would need for this position are strong analytical and critical thinking skills, proficiency in programming languages like Python or R, and a deep knowledge of statistical methods. And typically, you're going to have a degree in something along the lines of mathematics, statistics, computer science, or data science. Now, some of the pros of this one are there's a lot of diverse and impactful projects across industries, and you get exposure to cutting edge 
edge technologies. And on top of that, data is probably like one of the hottest types of careers now, not just for data scientists, but there's a lot of different data related careers. Now, some of the cons of this are the need for ongoing skill development and staying updated with evolving tools and techniques. There can be complex and sometimes ambiguous problem solving challenges, and there can be a potential for limited face to face collaboration and solitary work. But overall, another fantastic career. I'm going to give this one a nine out of 10 opportunity score. Now, a lot of these on the list were involved in technology and business. The next on the list is going to be involved in a different industry, and that is finance. And the career is going to be a financial manager. And basically, you're going to be overseeing the financial operations of a business. Show me the money. Show me the money. And you'll be helping to make strategic decisions to optimize financial performance and ensure the business's future success. And financial managers make about $143,000 a year. Now, some of the skills you might need for this are strong analytical skills, attention to detail, financial acumen, strategic thinking, and the ability to interpret and analyze financial data. Now, with this one, you absolutely are going to need at least a bachelor's degree in either finance or accounting. And on top of that, you're also going to need to have some experience in an entry-level finance job. And in many cases, it's a good idea to also get certifications. Now, some of the pros here are you're going to have an influence over financial decision making, and there is a wide variety of different work tasks, and you have the ability to make a ton of money. There really is a ton of money in the finance industry. But with that being said, there are some downsides to working in finance as well. Some of the cons here are the responsibility for managing complex financial processes and dealing with potential risks and challenges, the pressure to deliver accurate financial reports and meet deadlines, the need for continuous learning to stay updated on financial regulations and industry trends, and the fact that many people in the finance industry work 60 plus hours a week. And in some cases, some positions work over 100 hours a week. I'm not even kidding you. Why would anyone do that to themselves? So this is one of those industries where it's high risk, high reward. People work incredibly hard, but some people are able to make millions and in some cases, even billions of dollars a year. Oh, well, that's good, I guess. That's why in the show Billions, it's about the finance industry. But finance can be right for the right type of person. And I'll give this one an opportunity score of eight out of 10. And the next one on the list is one that you might not expect, but this is actually a very common job that can be done remotely, and that's going to be an actuary. And this is all about using your statistical and mathematical knowledge to assess risk and reward. So for instance, one very common job of actuaries is designing insurance policies. So you're basically assessing the risk of a person needing to use the insurance policy. And interestingly enough, actuaries have actually been around since the 17th century. And the first known actuarial society was founded in 1775 in London. So this shows how long the profession has been around and how important it is to be able to manage expectations when it comes to risk and reward. And actuaries make about $152,000 a year. Now, some of the skills you need for this one are strong mathematical and analytical skills, attention to detail, critical thinking, problem solving ability, communication skills, and the ability to work independently. And the way you would get started with this is by getting a mathematics, statistics, or actuarial science degree. And then you would typically go into some entry level positions, maybe in the insurance industry, for instance, and work your way up to actuary. So some of the pros of this one are it has excellent job security, you have an opportunity to make a significant impact on financial decision making, and there is a lot of professional development opportunities. Some of the cons of this one are the need for continuous learning and staying up to date on industry trends, and it can be somewhat boring. But overall, I'm going to give this one an opportunity score of eight out of 10. By the way, if it seems like these are too hard to get into, I actually did make a video on the six work from home jobs that do not require a resume or interview in order to get hired. And you can check that out by clicking right here.